Good afternoon and welcome to your only conservative alternative at 4 p.m. Eastern, the Chris Alcedo Show on Newsmax. Here are the headlines trending across America. Gold Star families of the United States service members killed in the botched Afghanistan withdrawal are demanding Biden and his military chiefs resign. We show you the heart-wrenching testimony. And Hyden Biden. It's been 13 days since he answered questions from the American people. This after his DOJ arrested his main political rival. And Biden's own criminal bribery scandal continues to be exposed. And Team Trump isn't backing down, pushing back against the Obama-appointed judge with a clear conflict of interest who's overseeing the case. Legal panel joining me to break that all down. And member of the House Freedom Caucus, Congressman Andy Ogle shares how Republicans plan to rein in a rogue Department of Injustice. Also standing by this hour, California Assembly Minority Leader James Gallagher and Chairman of Reform California, Carl DeMaio. They weigh in on the misery that is Gavin Newsom's California. But first, one of the missions of the Chris Alcedo Show, and we have many, is to highlight as often as possible the fact that the majority of people who populate the nation's newsrooms are not dedicated journalists. They are, rather, dedicated Democrats. These people in the left-wing press will give scant coverage, lie by omission, or straight-up lie, all in an effort to protect the Democrat Party. From charges of criminal influence peddling to the disgusting practice of childhood trafficking, the lion's share of the press is dedicated to making sure that the anti-freedom agenda of the Democrat Party is never challenged, examined, or punished. And only Republicans who are willing to sell out their voters are willing and able to come, and they're welcome with open arms to the leftist press party. Fake news is alive and well in Democrats' America. That's my observation in today's preamble. Let's deal with the GOP's leadership surrender first. Just today, the RNC put out a tweet highlighting that the left-wing press spent no time covering the Devin Archer testimony, testimony that shows... Joe Biden has been lying to the country for years. Ironically, only MSNBS dedicated a minuscule amount of time to those bombshell revelations about Joe Biden's knowledge of his son Hunter's business dealings abroad. Now, some of you might be congratulating the RNC for calling out the unfair coverage of the major networks, but hold those pats on the back. The RNC will reward those very same unfair networks with GOP debates. And so-called Republicans will continue to validate the unfair treatment they receive from those very same networks by appearing on those networks. While we're speaking of Republicans who reward left-wing extremism, let's turn to the GOP's leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell. On Saturday, Mr. McConnell spoke at the 143rd Fancy Farm Picnic, where Republicans and Democrats face off to pitch thousands of Kentucky voters the event is known for getting lively, hurling insults, one-line zingers, and raucous crowds. It's all part of the tradition. This was how McConnell was greeted. For your kids, we're up against folks who'd rather let repeat offenders walk free than get tough on crime. I'm glad Governor Bashir finally decided Republican government to Frankfurt this fall. We can finally put a stop. All right, shouts of retire rang out, I suspect from the conservative base in Kentucky. I was struck how nobody really wanted to hear McConnell's feigned criticism of Kentucky's Democrat governor, mostly because McConnell and Republicans like John Cornyn of Texas, Mitt Romney, Lisa Murkowski, and House Republicans, like those who voted to protect Adam Schiff, nobody believes that particular brand of Republican actually opposes the left-wing extremism that is now the mainstream in the Democrat Party. Speaking of which, let's turn to the extremism of the Democrat Party that's being normalized or omitted from the coverage of the biased press. It's been astonishing to watch the depths the biased press has stooped to to protect Democrats' promotion of illegal immigration. The press commitment is so strong, they'd even ignore the epidemic of sex slavery. The press has worked to suppress coverage of this real and growing blight on humanity. And the Democrats, who have been pro-criminal in recent years, are actually voting to protect this particularly vile class of criminal. California Assembly Democrats blocked a bill that would have made child sex trafficking a serious felony. The bill would have put child sex trafficking on the same level as rape and murder so that perpetrators would either spend their lives in jail or undergo a death sentence. One leftist, Joan Sawyer, 
provided his excuse for going soft on child molesters. Quote, we will not build on a deeply flawed sentencing system that unfairly punishes disadvantaged communities, end quote. Assembly Majority Leader Isaac Bryan said this about increased penalties for those who sexually exploit children, quote, all they do is increase our investment in systems of harm and subjugation at the expense of the investments that the communities need to not have this be a problem to begin with, end quote. As always, the Democrats are consumed with protecting the criminals, not law-abiding citizens and not the innocence of America's children. And the press is playing right along, calling efforts to draw attention to the abuse of children a QAnon conspiracy theory, as CNN did, or ignoring whistleblower testimony that indicts the Democrats' government. Testimony like this. I thought I was going to help place children in loving homes. Instead, I discovered that children are being trafficked through a sophisticated network that begins with recruiting in home country, smuggling to the U.S. border, and ends when ORR delivers a child to a sponsor. Some sponsors are criminals and traffickers and members of transnational criminal organizations. Some sponsors view children as commodities and assets to be used for earning income. This is why we are witnessing an explosion of labor trafficking. Now, whether it's intentional or not, it could be argued that the United States government has become the middleman in a large-scale, multi-billion-dollar child trafficking operation. Hmm. Joe Biden's party on the national level remains just as committed as the Democrats in the states to protecting child molesters. House Judiciary Committee Democrats rejected an amendment by Texas Congressman Chip Roy that would have increased punishment for sex child uh, traffickers, including upping the maximum prison time for sex offenders. Democrats who were on this committee deserve to be identified. Gerald Nadler of New York, J6th Unselect Committee member Zoe Lofgren and Jamie Raskin, leftist Pramila Jayapal of Washington, Eric Swalwell of Fang Fang fame, along with his fellow Californian left-winger Ted Lieu. And we can't forget Hank Johnson of Georgia, who once suggested that the island of Guam could capsize due to overpopulation. Now, I dropped the word representative in front of those people's names because I thought I'd leave it up to their voters in their districts. If these soft on child predator Democrats represent your values, if they don't, then they are fake representatives. Covering up for the Democrat depravity and illegality has been a full-time job for the fake news press. In fact, they're getting some help now from permanent Washington, as they, too, have adopted a complete government response toward making sure Americans never find out the truth about Democrats. In contrast, on The Chris Salcedo Show, we cover everything we can and get you the facts as we know them. That way, you can act in defense of your family, your community, your state, and your country. Not everyone in the media can say the same.